Um, we got to get started a little bit yesterday uh, on, on Alabama and knock some putting to bed the last game out of the way and uh, get a little bit of a head start on these guys uh, for today. So we'll begin with them and uh, open it up for any questions. Yeah, Coach, I'm, I'm curious if you could explain the difference between – or maybe the dichotomy or difference between a, a quarterback who might be a great scrambler, a guy who can extend with his legs, versus an offense that incorporates a quarterback design run, what the difference might be between the two and where Milrow might land in this Alabama offense. Uh, he has the ability to do both. He is a, a tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, football player. I mean, when you – I didn't really know until I got further into the games and watching them uh, last night um, how good he really is at what he does. And um, I think anytime you can scramble and extend plays, a la uh, Stetson, really anybody, it makes it harder to defend. When you have the component of uh, design runs mixed in with that, it complicates it even more because um, he becomes an extra uh, uh, a player, an extra guy to tackle, a physical guy to tackle, big physical guy that has <clears throat> has running back characteristics, but he has the ability to throw the ball. He throws the ball well, especially off their play action game. He does a really good job of uh, taking shots and throwing the ball downfield. He sees it well, and they've got a massive offensive line to protect him with. So when you've got the ability to run the ball as a uh, designed run, and then you also can run the ball in your scrambles, it just makes it harder to defend. Kirby, from the perception you had of him to the reality of watching it, is it the, the long, bro, uh, long ball success that's had um, in your mind that you've seen through the pro progression of the year? Like, all right, now seeing it on tape, that's one thing I didn't know um, maybe that he had at the beginning of the year that you're focused on now. No, you're focused on the whole package. I mean, you're trying to stop the uh, the entire unit, the entire group, as well as you know, they've got a really good defense and they've got tremendous special teams. There's no areas that you look at and go, ooh, that's a weakness, or ooh, they're not very good there. They got really good football players. They're well coached. Um, they, they, their special teams units, you see it. It pops out on the screen. They got starters all over it. So when you go to the offense and you see Milrow and the, the the leaders they have there, they're they're really talented. They're really tough. Uh, they're sound, um, and he he makes plays. He makes lots of plays. Um, number one with his athletic ability, but he makes them with his arm as well. <clears throat> Kerry, what stands out to you about Alabama's defense, and are there characteristics with this defense that you're used to seeing with a Kevin Steele defense? Yeah, I mean, size, uh, speed, toughness, aggressiveness, uh, multiple coverages, uh, players that can play multiple positions. Um, the depth across the defensive line is 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 one of the things that pops out at you. They, they, they roll guys, and they constantly have fresh guys in there striking, uh, playing blocks, playing with great toughness. Um, <clears throat> really good at the star position, very experienced. Uh, got two corners that are going to be drafted that are good players, uh, playing with great safeties. I mean, they, they've, they've got an all-around really good defense, but that's what you would expect. I mean, you'd expect nothing less from, from this group. Kirby, last time you played Alabama, we, we know what that meant, uh, the win meant for the program. W what did beating Alabama in particular mean uh, after coming so close uh, previously? Uh, it meant that the University of Georgia got a national championship, and that's the significance uh, of that. Uh, Coach, understanding that you, you, your line play has been excellent in the run game, uh, but with regard to Kendall Milton specifically, uh, his runs have seemed more explosive. Uh, he seems to be doing just more with the ball in general when he gets through those holes and such like that. What do you attribute? Is that just health? Is that just him being healthy? Um, good run scheme, being in the right runs at the right time, um, understanding leverages, uh, a really good run plan and, and perimeter blocking. But he certainly is, is healthier than he's been. He's running with confidence. Uh, I feel like he's hitting the hole uh, a lot harder because he's more confident. Um, and being explosive is getting to the secondary. You're not going to be an explosive run offense if you don't get your backs to the secondary. And uh, that's one thing we've been able to do is get him past that first level. And you know, he's running through a lot of arm tackles too, which is uh, really important to, to, to be an explosive run team. Yeah, is there any update on the status of Julian Humphrey and Jamon Dumas Johnson? Are they sort of still week to week with their injuries? Yeah, still week to week with their injuries, trying to get both those guys back. Kirby, I said this earlier today. How do you guys stay fresh when you've had to, I don't know, carry on this win streak, the week to week, getting everybody's best punch, 
and he mentioned player accountability and, and the honest criticism that goes on. How do you balance that with, with the sort of um, praise to keep guys going? I mean, it seems like that would be a really delicate balance. I, I mean, it's just the, we tell the truth. I mean, uh, the truth is not always criticism. I mean, the truth is the truth. Um, and we were very honest. When guys play well, we tell them. And when they don't, we tell them. And uh, sometimes it's OK to not play well if the, uh, the person whipped you and, 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 and played better than you. Or we, we talk about the intangibles when we, we go through the game. We talk about the things we can control. Uh, we don't we don't get outside of that and we don't very 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 far and we use the analogy early in the year that the, the Navy SEALs that, that, that we studied and visited with in the offseason one of the number one things they said if you're too sensitive for criticism you can't be in our group um, because you know th their criticism is different they're sensitive if you're sensitive to that then the guy next to you may die you know and like we're not dealing with things that drastic so it's really important that you understand you can't be sensitive and actually get better. Kirby, what have you seen on film from Dallas Turner and uh, Caleb Downs? Uh, both tremendous athletes, very instinctive. Um, you know, we recruited both those guys. They're passionate about uh, the game of football. They love the game of football. They love to play the game of football. And those kind of kids are their favorite kind to coach. You know, they're, they're in there every day with a bright eye. They're they're um, they're taking notes. They're, they're they they love to play the game, and you see that on tape out of both those guys, um, both very very elite football players. Coach, you guys have won as many SEC championships as you have national championships. Just how hard is it to win these games, and does it make you appreciate it even more? Yeah, I have a great appreciation for this game because you know I grew up an SEC kid, an SEC footprint kid, an SEC player. Uh, I've coached most of my career in the SEC. So I have an appreciation for this game and uh, how hard it is to win. I mean, um, it, it was no different my experience in Alabama. You know, we had a year that we won a national championship that we didn't win an SEC championship. So, um, you know, that's happened uh, a couple times in our conference. It's hard to find that in most conferences. I think it speaks to the depth uh, of our conference. It speaks to the uh, – the, the, how hard it is just to get to the game. I mean, uh, we in, in some ways, I think Alabama and us have been spoiled, and I don't think some kids appreciate, they think it's a rite of passage, and it's not. It's earned. And uh, it's, it's some of the greatest uh, venues, the uh, environments that, that, that uh, I've been a part of to play in that game. What does this Alabama receiving core do well, and just what challenges do you feel like they're going to present on Saturday? They're athletic. They're fast. They got speed all over the place. Um, they've got some some guys that really do well on the vertical balls. Um, obviously, going to throw that that deep ball really well. Uh, they they've got intermediate routes. They got teams that you know play off of them, and they hit timing routes. They're able to throw quick game and RPOs. Do a really good job of that. Their run after catch has been good, and you know one of the the, the key contributing factors to explosive plays for them has been if a play breaks down and the timing's not right, you know, some quarterbacks have to throw it away. Some quarterbacks have to uh, take off and run. They, they, they turn, you know, they turn plays into massive explosive plays. So, you know, part of their, their plan, they know their quarterback's going to be able to extend plays. He has the, the longest time to throw in the entire NCAA. And uh, uh, they make plays out of those plays. And I think that's – a really a contribution that they've made as a receiving core to him is the ability to get open on plays that may not have been by design. Kirby, your initial reaction to watching their game winner versus Auburn was? Uh, I, I didn't see it till uh, uh, you know, yesterday when I watched that game and went through the tape. It was uh, crazy how it got to that point. Like. To, to be down there and be close and then be all the way backed up uh, and then to come out on top with that play. I mean, it just – it shows his arm talent. And, I mean, and most teams have a play by design that they play from certain yardage intervals, you know, from maybe 15 to 25 to this play, 25 to 35 this play. You know, it's not just a Hail Mary play. It's a, it's a play to try to find a one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, they were able to find a one-on-one, -on -one, which that gives you the best percentages you can have. 
Kirby, what did uh, the film review for you guys reveal about uh, QB run defense uh, and you know what kind of corrections can help as you face the next challenge this week? Uh, similar to most things, um, like when you look at the tape, you never as bad as you think and never as good as you think. There's some, uh, some misfits in there, some guys uh, maybe not keying what they're supposed to key and looking at what they're supposed to key. And then some of it is, you know, like I actually thought that we struck blocks and played the blocks really well up front better than I thought coming out. It was not a matter of, oh, we just got whipped. It was a matter of some things we didn't fit well and we didn't knock back tackle. So uh, instead of second seven, it's second four. It's a big difference. And uh, the, the effort to finish and get more uh, bodies uh, on contact is really important because that manages what your down and distances are. Kirby, to kind of continue the theme on stopping QB run, is the notion of spying a quarterback, is that something that maybe people think about too much? Or is, does it get overplayed? Is it something that you can do? on every play or, or how, how effective is it when you try to say we're going to have this guy spy and quarterback in a game? Two different things I think you're discussing there. I don't know if you're referencing spying the quarterback or if you're talking about stopping quarterback runs. Okay, completely different worlds there. Because if you're going to stop a quarterback run, you're not spying the quarterback. Because, I mean, some, some of his most explosive plays are drop back passes that people are doing their job and he becomes the runner, and he takes off and runs. Whereas a QB design run, you usually know within the first one second or, or millisecond of the play, whether it's a design run or it's a drop back pass. So on a drop back pass, if he takes off and he's the best athlete on the field, you've got maybe seven or eight guys that got a chance to tackle him because he's already passed the first ones. Whereas on a, on a designed run, you know, it's, it's meant and blocked for him to run the ball. You can't put a spy on that. You got to fit your gaps. You got to do gap control. You got to have fits. You got to get knocked back. You got to get off blocks. So yeah, people do, do try to spy him uh, and their spy can't get him on the ground. So uh, everybody's had a different plan of action and everybody's done it different ways and we'll try to put together what our best plan of action is but if you don't stop the quarterback runs it never gets to the point he has to throw it you know you you don't, you don't have to throw it if they can run the ball every play yeah last time you guys played alabama you beat them does maybe the confidence that comes from that does any of that carry over in this game or is that so long ago it's ancient history and there's not much you can take away from that game yeah, i think the two teams are very different I mean, you look at who they were then and who we were then, I don't know that they could be, you know, polar opposites in terms of uh, what they do uh, offensively and, 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 and even us um, from a standpoint and who we were defensively then. So I don't think the two not, – not a lot – in college football today, not a lot of players that played in that game are playing in this game. If they did, they were probably a minor role. Kirby, a lot of history and tradition about this game. I think that's why so many people love it. So I'm going to ask you to maybe reflect if you can remember a long time ago. 2009, I think Chuck Dunlap told us that this is only the second time two teams have met undefeated in the league in the game. You were the defensive coordinator for Nick Saban, and I think you took down Florida. I think that led to a national title, your first one as an assistant. Can you reflect on that? And then, too, when you were talking about Milrow, are those like Tim Tebow characteristics with the size, the speed, and the running ability? No offense to Tim Tebow, but he's he's th th this guy's different. You know, Tim was, uh, you know, I mean, he was just it was a different different running style. You know, very different running style in terms of uh, what they did and, and how they did things. Um, this guy's, I mean, it's like when I was when I used to ask. My, my sons who they were playing with on the Madden game and they would say, I'm playing with the Ravens. And I would say, why are you playing with the Ravens? And they would say, I got, they got Lamar Jackson and nobody can tackle him. Well, this guy's a, a bigger physical version of, of that. He's playing at a different speed uh, than everybody else when you watch it. And that's the way the Madden game was for him. And, uh, you know, people, you know, the guy throws the ball really well. So the comparison to 2009, I don't know if you're trying to compare that to that or you're just saying, do we remember the game? Yeah, I remember the game. It was a, a game for us that, that we had lost the previous year and felt like we were really close to winning and felt like we were going to have to get over that hurdle. They were the dominant team uh, in the country, I guess, at that time. And they had uh, some really good football players and had a really good coaching staff. Uh, and we played a good game that game. And uh, the players all played and believed in themselves. And it was a, it was a tremendous uh, venue and game, sure. 
what have you seen out of C.J. Allen and Raylan Wilson, especially since Jamon has gone down and they've taken on a more significant role in this defense? Yeah, they've grown up. They had to grow up fast, man. I mean, you, you talk about getting thrown into the fire at uh, Ole Miss, uh, uh, Tennessee, uh, Georgia Tech. They've had to play in three games um, that were really tough uh, physical games. And in, in, in prep, each game was different in terms of – Style. It's not like they've gone this style, this style, this style. They went from Ole Miss to Tennessee to Georgia Tech and three completely off different offenses to prepare for. Uh, and they're, they're they're young guys. You know, they make mistakes, but they also uh, have a quiet confidence about them. They're good athletes, um, and they're they're well coached. So I'm really proud of what they've been able to do. And we need them to play well uh, to 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 get defensive stops. And uh, you know, when you're you're playing with freshmen at that position, I think anybody in the country will tell you. It's a little like playing with a quarterback there. You, you, you just don't want to have to play with freshmen there, but they're the guys that are up, and uh, they've done a good job. Kirby, you mentioned um, the whole <clears> – <throat> right here. I uh, mentioned the whole element of, of with Milrow, the, you can do everything right, you can do most things right, and they still find a way to make big plays. How important is does that make kind of your next play, your bad things are going to happen, or adversity is going to strike stuff? Uh, within the program and your process, how important does it make that element of it, you know, this week for this particular game? Well, it's no more important than it is ever. Like, how could I sit here and say that it's any more important this week than ever? It's, it's every week, it's when the next moment. Certainly, that applies to this game. But I would not sit here and say it didn't apply to any of the last 12 games. How you respond to it matters a lot more than what happened. Um, he is going to make plays. I mean, that's a given. You watch every game he's played. He has made plays, uh, and he has an uncanny ability to extend plays. And whether that's, you know, he knows he's getting ready to take off and he's setting you up, he pump fakes, he does a lot of things with the ball um, that make him hard to defend. But he can make plays, and, and, and you know, we're going to make some plays. So you've got to have confidence that you're going to make more uh, than they're going to make. Got time for two more questions? Yeah, Coach, a lot of talk about the maturation of Jalen Miller. I'm curious your thoughts on what you've seen from Tommy Reese in his first year as the offensive coordinator there at Alabama. Yeah, I think he's he's adapting to what he has. You know, people always talk about this team and where they are now. They're playing as good a football as anybody in the country. And don't talk to me about playing in Auburn because I know. So they, they, they have played really, really good football, and they've evolved. Uh, from the start of the year to now. They're not the same team they were in the beginning of the year. Not many are. I mean, we, we had to figure out who we were and, and, and who we were identity-wise and how you're going to use guys. Then guys are out of the offense. Guys are in the offense. Guys are out of the defense, in the defense. And you, you evolve. And, and, you know, they're, they're a very talented, really well-coached, good football team that's playing its best football at the end of the year. Regarding Dumas Johnson, I, I just want to make sure I'm 100% clear on this. Uh, his injury, it did require a surgical repair to, to, to uh, get him back on the right track. And is there any realistic chance that, that he's able to come back for this game? He's week to week. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys.